les, les images que j'ai, c'est vraiment de, de, dans les camps de beaucoup, beaucoup de personnes qui, qui attendaient qu'on puisse les, les aider d'une façon ou d'une autre. Mais pour la, première pour la première fois aussi que je suis en Haïti, euh, j'ai vu un sentiment en lien de solidarité entre les Haïtiens qui se sont trouvés dans ce type de situation. Et ça, c'était quelque part un peu, peut-être une des seules, entre guillemets, jolies découvertes d'un point de vue humain de l'après-catastrophe, de voir que ce sentiment de solidarité que avant je n'arrivais pas vraiment à ressentir ou à voir, bah, au moins à ce moment-là, il était là. When I went to the Christopher, it was about one week later. It had already the atmosphere of a graveyard. I could feel the souls of the people who were perished. I could feel it. You know how sometimes when you go to a graveyard and you can feel there's a different atmosphere? That's how it was. There was nothing there anymore. It was completely gone. Completely gone. You could barely you couldn't tell anymore where what was, where things had stood. And I looked up and there was the ha half of the annex, you know, the offices. There was a chair kind of like at a broken angle a bit. Some papers flattering and you know, all the offices where people had worked. All you heard was the breeze. No cicada, no bug, not even a bird chirping, nothing in this atmosphere of cemetery. <sighs> Several times a day I would get the feeling, no, this is just a dream. It's just a bad, bad, bad dream. We had machines working 24 hours a day. One of the machines uh, had a breakdown, a hydraulic pipe broke on the machine. We stopped the machines from working. It was four or five o'clock in the morning and we decided we're gonna wait for uh, the technicians to come in to fix it and we will uh, rest for a while. Dead silence six, seven o'clock in the morning, nobody's moving, and just in that special moment, he knocks. He was saved by a broken machine. He was saved by the fact that it was so quiet that somebody could hear him knock. I knew there was looting downtown because our cameraman brought back the tape. I knew there were 10,000 or more bodies piled up at the morgue because our cameraman brought back the tape. 
it was hard for me to look at these images. They were so painful and graphic. And, but I knew it must have been much harder for them because they were out there. They, they weren't just seeing it. They were smelling it. They were feeling it. They would talk about what happened to them when they went out and um, some started wearing something to cover their nose and their mouth because the, the smell of death just covered the city. The Haitians had no idea where to bring their dead. And maybe some of them were injured and they were on their way to the, the medical centers. Many of the medical centers fell down. So they're on their way. They're trying to do something with these people that they love and um, get help for them. Or maybe they'd already gone from this world and they would just leave them outside the doors of the hospitals and the medical centers and the morgue. In the beginning, means after the earthquake, we start food distribution, means it was not well planned. You know why? Because we haven't distributed the tickets. Means before we used to take the trucks and we used to tell all the people to stay in the line. Means uh, it's human nature because all want to stay in line in front. Means that means there will be huge crowd. Then it will be very much difficult to maintain those lines because almost there will be 5,000 people and we can't tell them stay in the line. If you tell also, they are not going to understand because all they are suffering from the earthquake. The hunger people, they will not think anything. They will only see the foods. So it was difficult, but we tried our best and we distributed anyhow. We controlled the public and we distributed in the beginning period. But after uh, four, five days, then we started giving the coupons to the public. To coordinate all this enormous amount of challenges and all this help that was arriving at the airport non-stop. No computers, no offices, senior management dead, buildings collapsed and roads blocked, injured people that needed to take care of. So the UN in Haiti was faced with a catastrophe without having its operating mechanism in place. And worse than that, the government was completely destroyed in terms of infrastructure as well. So how would you go about coordinating a situation in such a chaotic condition?